Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Back in 2016, Graham Hancock released an article on his website called Gobekli Tepe Image on Sumerian Tablet and it's such a clickbait title that I had to borrow it for this video. And that's no disrespect because it sums up the contents of the article and this video pretty well. In the article it says that Hancock was contacted by an independent researcher called Madeline Danes who was working through the cuneiform digital library when she came across a Sumerian tablet from 3500 BC which means it was made between 4 and 5000 years after Gobekli Tepe after the site was abandoned and the T-shaped pillars covered over. Remember, as I've stated in recent videos, in the latest research, experts now believe Gebekli Tepe was not deliberately covered over when it went out of use, but it happened naturally because of slope slides. The circular enclosures were semi-subterranean and built on a shallow slope, and new research into the fills of the enclosures shows that this is the most likely explanation. Sadly, the misconception of deliberate burial is still being repeated today in 2022, probably because it sounds more mysterious and exciting, but it's likely untrue. But anyway, this tablet is apparently showing us a depiction of a Gebekli Tepe circular enclosure with T-shaped megalithic pillars, and in his article, Hancock asks whether this could mean that sites with similar architecture to Gebekli Tepe could have remained in operation long after the pre-pottery Neolithic. He also asks if these structures could have still been revered by the Sumerians thousands of years later. The tablet dates to the Uruk 5 period between 3500 and 3250 BC and it was originally part of a larger tablet. Hancock said that the researcher who made the discovery was set to write an article and a book as well because they wanted to, and I quote, get the truth out there. Because, and I quote again, we have been led up the garden path on more than one level. And I couldn't agree more, but not in the same way she means. Because, in truth, this really is a non-discovery aimed at exciting people and jumping on the Gobekli Tepe bandwagon. Yes, it's probably honest, but it really is an enormous stretch. The archaeology is already exciting enough, and the study of pre-pottery Neolithic Anatolia doesn't need any extraordinary claims, because it's already extraordinary all by itself. We are looking at a fragment of a cylinder seal impression, and the cuneiform digital library gives a scanned black and white photograph, as well as some basic information like the material used and which collection it's from. But look at the actual photograph. Look at the number in the top left. The image is actually upside down. So, if we look at it upside down, Yes, it could be interpreted as a very abstract picture of a Gebekli Tepe circular enclosure, and yes, these could be T-shaped pillars. But now, let's put it the correct way up. For a start, this is just a fragment, and it's clear the original full image would have been far more complex. But turn the other way, and we can see there is more detail on the now upside down left pillar on the right hand side. Now, there is a reason that archaeologists still create drawings of artefacts, because sometimes photography, the lighting, the angles and so on, make some details hard to see. As archaeologist Oliver Dietrich shows on the Tepe Telegrams blog, an archaeologist drew the artefact in 1972 and published it in a journal. And, as you can see, it's the correct way up. The drawing is accompanied by the photograph, and the description says, two figures sitting on curved seats, in front of apparatuses made up of two supports with square bases, and an elongated oval element. If the artefact wasn't so damaged, the image would likely show the people touching the oval elements more clearly, whatever they're meant to be. 
and this is a likely interpretation because similar seal impressions have also been found in the same location, showing very similar iconography. In this picture, also from the same publication, we see somebody touching the oval element once again. This time the two supports are opposing each other, but are still connected by the oval. It is a stylized picture, but the square part is the base, not the top of a T-shaped pillar. The person who discovered and documented the object in the 1970s was an expert in Sumerian cylinder seals. The iconography is very similar to what we see on other seals, and for obvious reasons, nobody is calling this a Gebekli Tepe circular enclosure. Of course we can all believe what we want to believe, but we do have to be realistic and logical, and the fact that this image was the wrong way up, well, it really should have set off alarm bells. Of course you could argue, how do we know which way up it should be? But I have to trust the cylinder seal expert that analysed it in context with other seals found with it. It's part of a collection. The Gebekli Tepe circular enclosures were covered around 10,000 years ago, and we know that because the fill has been dated, both with archaeological finds and radiocarbon dating. There are of course other circular enclosures at pre-pottery Neolithic sites as well. But in the 4 to 5,000 years after the pre-pottery Neolithic, no circular enclosures or T-shaped pillars have been depicted in any art by any culture or civilization. not even the Neolithic and Chalcolithic sites in Anatolia itself. So, for a circular enclosure to suddenly pop up on a badly worn and incomplete Sumerian cylinder seal, well, it's too unbelievable to be true, in my opinion anyway. It's not any kind of credible evidence in isolation that the Sumerians revered Gebekli Tepe. There are no other discoveries from ancient Mesopotamia with references to or depictions of pre-pottery Neolithic architecture of southeastern Anatolia. We're looking at two supports with square feet at the bottom. We can also see some kind of knob at the top and the supports are connected by an oval. It's likely some kind of apparatus, and both seals are actually part of a group, and they show people at work. In this case they're probably weaving. The oval could simply be the thread. The human brain interprets things with a bias to former experiences and knowledge. Of course it's okay to hypothesize. I do it all the time but you have to be logical and thorough in your research, and then you can come to the most likely conclusion. It's the same with the engraved bone spatula that was found at Gebekli Tepe, interpreted by Andrew Collins as showing two T-shaped pillars. But, as I said in a recent video, I have to disagree, and I think what we are actually looking at is a stylized vulture. If you want to learn more about my own unique interpretation, I've linked the video in the description below. So, back to the subject of this video. Is this Gebekli Tepe on a Sumerian tablet? Do we see a circular enclosure with T-shaped pillars? Well, logic and research says almost certainly no. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.